Hello everyone! Today we're going to take a look at what's the best free-to-play weapon for a sub DPS official, so let's not waste any time and get started. For those of you who wanted a Rosaria video, at the timing of this video, her data has not been completely released yet, so once her data is completely out, I will be able to make more videos on her, but for now, let's take a look at sub DPS official for today. Some things to know for this video. 1. Free to play in this video means weapons you can only get in the actual game, not including Battle Pass, Paimon Shop, and from Gacha. Hence, Vivonius Warbo and Craftables are included as well. 2. Artifact sets are based on Two Piece Gambler and Two Piece Thundering Fury. I am following Fischl's mains on what they recommend for a sub DPS C0 official. I didn't include Gladiator set, but might do so in a future updated video for this. Two Piece Gambler is a 4 star artifact, so I put it on Flower and Fetter as they have the least impact on your DPS. Fischl mains say you can choose between Fetter or Sans, but the higher your base damage goes, attack percent is going to give you more attack, so I recommend getting Gambler for Oni, Flower, and Fetter. Sub DPS official for this video is that you just summon Oz through her elemental skill or burst and switch her out. Perhaps there's a more viable way of using her as a sub DPS that I am not aware of. I will update it in a future video if that is the case. 4. I have also included Windbloom Ode R5 since a lot of you probably already have this bow from the recent event at the time of this video. 5. I didn't focus too much on elemental mastery because apparently it's really bad on electro units according to official mains, so I didn't focus too much on it. But if you are still curious, I did include the damage in the video for those of you who are interested. Only level and enemy resistance affect Electro Elemental Reactions. So a Messenger Elemental Reaction will give the same damage as a Prototype Crescent Elemental Reaction if they have the exact same Elemental Mastery. With that out of the way, let's get started. We're using a level 80 Ascend Official with a talent level of 8 with these two specific artifact builds depending on what subset the weapon has. I optimized it to which one will give you a higher average DPS. As always, Hellature will be our set resistance. Setting the baseline would be the worst bow, which is Recurve Bow. This will be the standard of the worst bow as it has a completely useless subset of HP% for Fischl, with an extremely low base attack, so this will be the lowest tier for all of the free-to-play weapons. Next will be Raven Bow, assuming no ability. If the enemy does not have Pyro or Hydro inflicted, this bow makes it the second worst bow for Fischl, Please pay attention to the elemental application as it does give a significant boost to DPS damage, whether it is R5 or R1. Its subset is Elemental Mastery, which will boost your elemental reactions. Next is Compound Bow. Even though this is a 4 star bow, its physical percent subset is completely useless for a sub DPS Fischl, despite its slightly higher base attack. Hence, it will not perform as well as your other bows. Favonius War Bow will be next. Although it has the exact same stats as Compound Bow, its substat is more useful as it gives you more energy recharge. However, it doesn't change much as its DPS is the same as Compound Bow. Next is Ravenbow R1. When Oz attacks enemies inflicted by Pyro and Hydro, then it gives a significant damage boost on its average DPS. However, this will not be applying 100% of the time, so let's assume it only applies 50% of the time. So your damage might look something similar to this, which makes it still stronger than two of the four star craftables in the game. Slingshot will be next with a crit damage artifact set. It has a very useful crit rate substat, which improves its average DPS, but its low base attack does make it fall short of the other upcoming bows. Next is Ravenbow R5. Just like before, this is the damage if Oz is always inflicting damage on enemies inflicted by Pyro and Hydro. However, if we average it out to 50% of the time when the ability activates or not, your damage will look like this, putting it in the spot in the tier list. Next is Sharpshooter's Oath, where its crit damage substat makes it excel compared to the other bows with its decent base attack, which places it in this spot in the free-to-play weapon tier list. Messenger is the next one which proves that if you have a mix of high base attack and a good substat like crit damage, then it shows in the number on how strong it will be, proving it to be the best 3 star bow for Fischl. The two last ones are Prototype Crescent and Windbloom Ode. And as you can see, Prototype Crescent's substat proves it does excel in the DPS game, even when Windbloom is buffed. Let's put more accurate numbers, so Windbloom will look more like this when averaged it out. I assumed 6 of Oz's attacks are buffed and 3 of them are not buffed. However, if you are looking at elemental reactions, Windbloom does take a higher spot, but I'm only taking into account DPS for this tier list specifically. Hence, our final tier list will look something like this. Once again, this is based on my opinion with my own calculations. Obviously, depending on the circumstances, it could look different for all of you. I hope this video was helpful for all of you. Please give it a like if it did, and I will see you all in the next video.